So you're looking to do an install of Windows 11, but you don't want all the bloatware and just rubbish that comes with it. But is there an easier way which you can actually do this? Well, the answer is yes. So quick introduction, welcome back everyone. It's Matthew here from Matthew's Tech Hub. Hope you're doing well. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually get an install of Windows 11 and choose the options that you want so you can actually de-bloat it and remove all the unnecessary crap that you just don't need in there. Now, this is quite an easy way of doing it. It's using an XML file, which is uh, through a website to generate it. But again, I'll be showing you how to do that throughout the process of this video. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So as you can see, we're back on the Windows 11 desktop. But if you are running Windows 10, the process still remains the same. Now, there's two things that need to do here, guys. We need to get two files. So the first thing is, as you guys probably know, we'll need Rufus. So the way you can get Rufus is just simply by going to their website, which is rufus.ie. And then as you scroll down here, um, you've got the download section. Just select on the version that is required for your version of Windows. So as I'm running 64-bit, it'll be x64. If you're running 32-bit, it'll be x86. And if you're running ARM, again, it'll be the ARM version right here. Just make sure you download that and then maybe pop it somewhere where you know where it's going to be. So I've just got mine on my desktop. The second thing you'll also need is you'll need a Windows 11 ISO file. Now, I've got a video already covering on how to do this. So if you just go back and check that, you can download the Windows Media Creation tool and then you'll be able to actually download the official ISO image, which is already comes with all the bloatware. But don't worry, we're going to skip through on how to get rid of all that. Now, once you've got your two files, so you've got the ISO file and the Rufus file, what we're now going to do is we're actually going to jump into another website, um, which again, the links will all be down in the description box down below. And this is a website where it actually creates an X, something called an XML file. Now, what this XML file does is it basically runs everything that you've pre-configured on this website before Windows installs, so it actually customize Windows. And it's a fantastic site. Um, I've come across it a few times and used it for some installs before. But this also allows you, which, uh, well, I've done, just recently done a video on how to actually remove uh, Windows Recall. So again, you can also remove Recall in this as well. So what we'll do, we'll run through the setup. I'll show you how I'm going to do it here. So um, you guys can maybe follow through. But if you want to customize anything or do something different to what I'm doing, again, feel free to do it. So as we scroll down here, so as you can see, the first thing is install Windows using these languages. So yes, I want it to be in English. I'm going to specify it to be in the UK here. You can specify a second language if you want to, but I'm not going to do that in today, in today's video. So if we scroll down again, uh, again, so processor architecture, you can also select the architecture that you're running. I'm running 64-bit, so I'm going to select 64-bit. Then you've got the bypass Windows 11 requirements, TPM secure boot, etc. This will be a good option if you are running this on this unsupported hardware, but because my hardware is supported, I don't really want to do this, so I'm going to leave that as unticked. Um, you've got allow Windows 11 to be installed without an internet connection. Yes, please tick this because this will allow you to install it without a Microsoft account, which is just a blessing. Uh, if we scroll down here, we've got computer name, so you can actually set the computer name that you want it to be, or we can leave it as auto generated. So I'm actually going to set a computer name here. I'm just going to call it um, MTH for Matthew's Tech Hub. And if we scroll down here, Compact OS, I'm just going to leave that as default. That, that's fine. Time zone, again, um, you can set that automatically. So Windows usually gets that automatically based on your location. So I'm probably going to leave that as default. But if you don't want that, again, you can uh, select this option here and then specify if you want it to be um, the time zone that you're looking to select. So if we scroll down here, you've got the, uh, the partitioning and formatting. So partition the disk interactively during Windows setup or let Windows wipe partition and uh, format your hard drive. So if you select this option here, this again, as it says, it will actually wipe all your hard drive and your data. So if you don't want that, if you're just doing a bit of an upgrade, obviously you want to select the first one. But if you are doing a fresh install, then maybe you want to select the second one. So I'm actually going to select the second one because, again, I've got it. Um, I'm going to be doing this on a, on a clean install, so that's fine. And again, uh, you've got the option for GPT or MBR. GPT is if you're using a newer system. MBR is if you're using an older system. But I'm using a relatively new system, so I'm going to use GPT. And I'm going to leave that all as defaults. So that's fine. Scroll down a little bit more here. So again, it's Windows Edition. So you can select a product if you want to use a generic product key or enter your own key. So I'm actually going to use a generic key because, again, once you've installed Windows, you can change it if you like. Um, so I'm going to leave that as generic. That's fine. And I'm also going to be installing the version of Windows Pro. But if you're not installing Windows Pro, you can select the different versions that you've got here. So you've got Home, Education, Pro N, Example, et well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just scrolling down to user accounts here. So as you can see, it's got user, uh, admin, password, etc. So you can actually let Windows set up and create the local offline accounts. 
and you can also cut, specify different options here. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to clear out the second account because I only want one account. I'm just going to call that uh, Windows, and I'm going to leave that the password as one two three four five, and I'm going to leave that as the administrator because I don't I do want to be an admin, not just a user. So that's fine. And if we scroll down a little bit more here, you've got passwords expiration. So maybe you want a password to expire after a certain amount of days. You can do that as well. But I don't want it to expire because obviously I'm happy to just change it when I need to. So I'm going to leave it as passwords do not expire. Um, account lockout policy. So again, you can have it so after, after 10, if you do enter the password wrong 10 times, it will lock you out for 10 minutes. But if you don't want that, obviously, then obviously it does warn you here that it would allow brute force attacks. But I'm just going to leave that as default because I'm sure I won't forget that password. And if we scroll down here, Windows Explorer tweaks, um, again, obviously you can uh, have it so you can show um, hidden system files if you like by default. That's quite handy if you're a techie like me, so I like to have that uh, enabled. So I'm going to click on the show all files just right here. But obviously if you're not an advanced user, then again, you can hide protected operating system files or just use the default setting, which is just where it hides it anyway. So as you scroll down here, um, we've got a little bit more. So we've got disable widgets. Yes, I'm going to get rid of that because it's just all bloatware. Uh, always show file extensions. Um, not too bothered about that, but if you want to see file extensions, then obviously you can enable that there if you want to. Uh, scrolling it down a little bit more here. So we've got high task view buttons from taskbar. Um, yeah, obviously I'm going to hide that, so that's fine. Uh, scrolling down further here. So we've got Windows, well, you actually disable Windows Defender. That's, that's handy if you're installing your own antivirus. So um, I'm going to leave the Windows Defender on there, but if you are, obviously you can also do that. But as you can see here, it does also disable things like Sense, WD Boot, and all these other um, processes here during the setup. So you might want to do that if you are a bit privacy conscious. So maybe I will take that, actually. We'll do that. Then also we've got Disable User Account Control, which is just annoying. It doesn't, doesn't really do much anyway, so that's fine. So I'm going to disable UAC. Uh, smart App Control as well, so you can disable that. So I'm going to do that as well. Uh, disable Smart Screen and Windows and Edge. Yes, disable all this. Um, and again, if we just scroll down a little bit further here, see what else we've got. So you've got uh, enable uh, remote desktop services. So if you are going to be using the PC remotely, then you might want to leave that uh, switch switches on right here. Uh, scrolling further down, let's just see what we've got. So you've got prevent device encryption. So again, if you don't want BitLocker to be enabled when you install Windows, that might be handy, but I want to use encryption, so that's fine. Um, and again, you've also got make Edge uninstallable. So if you don't want to have Microsoft Edge on your system, again, you can also do this. So it might be worth actually doing that because I, I don't like Edge. I, might, I, I don't use Edge personally, even though it's just Google Chrome. Um, virtual machine support. So if you're installing this on the virtual machine, you can have it so it pre-installs all the additions and the tools. But um, again, I'm happy to do that manually. So I'm just going to leave those unticked. Wi-Fi setup. So if here, right here, if you want to actually configure your Wi-Fi network name and password, so you can do that. So I've got to enter it when you log in. Um, but I'm happy to just configure it, um, obviously, when we get to there. So I'm actually going to skip the Wi-Fi configuration because I'm happy to do it when I log into Windows. Now, if we scroll down here, so you've got Express Settings. So Windows will not send diagnostics. That's where it asks you about the privacy questions. I'm going to disable all those because you know I, I don't want those to be enabled. Um, lock Key Settings. Again, I'm going to leave all this. This is to do with your Caps Lock and NumLock. I'm just going to leave that all as default to how they act normally. And again, you can also personalize Windows as well. So again, this is beta, so it's not going to be uh, fully working, but it's worth giving it a try if you want to. Um, and obviously, you can configure the desktop background there. So I'm actually going to set the desktop background. I'm going to set it so it uses just a black color. And then this is now the important sections. Now, this is remove bloatware. So you can easily select all of them, or you can deselect all of them. Um, I'm actually going to select all of them to start off with, and then what I normally do is just go through them one by one, see what I don't want. Obviously, the most one well, of the most important one here is actually recall, which is again I've got a video already covering that, so go for to check out that video if you want to learn more about Windows recall. Um, but yeah, so obviously I'm going to leave this all ticked because again I just want a clean installation of Windows, so that's perfect for me. And again, start menu customization, so you can um, obviously use the default tiles. It says here if you select the apps in remove bloatware section above. Windows 10 will automatically remove their tile. So that means they won't show in the start menu if you've decided to select all these bloatware options to be removed. So that's absolutely fine for me. So if we scroll down, keep scrolling down here. This is obviously if you want to run uh, custom scripts. Again, I'm not too bothered about this, but you might want to do this if you're installing this across uh, multiple devices for any specific reason. Scrolling down further, again, we've got Windows Defender application control. Um, so again, I'm going to leave that just not, not to configure it. I'm just going to leave it how it is. 
So once you get to the very bottom of the page, uh, the last one is download settings. So again, it says here, you can use a file name, not autounattended.xml rather than autoattended.xml. That's if you want to run the file um, manually using the command uh, command uh, prompt window. But uh, again, I'm going, I want it to run automatically. So I'm going to leave that unticked. And then all you do right now at the bottom is click on this download XML file. So I'm just going to select on this. Downloads, give that, oh, click on it again, maybe. There we go. And that's it. So as you can see now in the top right corner, we've now got auto unattended.xml. So I'm now going to put this file onto my desktop next to all the other files, uh, all the programs I've got. So I've got the ISO file, Rufus, and now the auto unattended. So what we're now going to do, guys, is if you've got a USB stick at this stage, you can now plug this in. And I'm just going to quickly plug mine in. So let me just do that. Right, so my USB is now plugged in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up Rufus right here. And then if again, if it asks to make change to device, just select yes. And then what we're now going to do is we're going to select, make sure the USB is selected, which it is. It's just called HBCD because I used it last for installing Hirons. But again, I've got a video on that um, covering Hirons. So right in here, um, again, we're going to select the ISO image. So we're going to select the ISO, which, we, which we've got, which is the normal Windows 11, which is full of bloatware currently. So if we just go to locate that and then open that up, and again, I'm going to leave everything as default. So again, standard, win standard Windows installation, leave it as GPT, which is all fine. Uh, and then if we scroll down, you can actually rename the USB if you want to. You might want to maybe want to call it like clean Windows 11 ISO if you're completely doing a completely de-bloated ISO image. But I'm just going to leave it all as default. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hit start. Now, it'll bring up all of these options here. But don't forget, you've just customized these in the uh, auto unattended file, or the XML file I've just created. So I'm going to actually untick all of these, uh, the XML file, uh, go through all those and do all those for me. So click on OK. And it's going to warn you about the data being destroyed on the device. That's fine. So just click on OK there. And I'm just going to let that now uh, process. So I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay, so now that our USB has now been created in within Rufus, what we're now going to do is we're just going to come out of Rufus here, and you're going to go down to the File Explorer just out at the bottom, and then you're just going to go into the USB stick that we just created, and you'll have all the files here. Now, what you're going to do is that XML file, the auto and attend, which is right here, is going to simply just drag it over and drop it into the USB stick. So just drag and drop into here, leave it there, and that's it. And now all you do, guys, is just come out of that, and I normally just uh, go down to the bottom right, right click on the USB, and then just go to safely eject just to make sure it doesn't corrupt there. So I'm now going to safely eject this USB stick. And that's it. And now what we're going to do is going to unplug the USB stick and then plug it into the device that you're going to boot up from. So I'll be back with you in just a moment. So I'm actually using a virtual machine here. So I'm now going to be booting into the USB on my virtual machine. So I'm just going to go into the boot menu and we're going to select on the USB device, which we just created, which is right here, and then press enter. And that's now going to boot from the USB stick that we've just created within Rufus. So I'm going to get that, that process. I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so now we have booted into the Windows setup process. So you may get a command prompt window, which again, it's going to be running some scripts in the background. If it is, just minimize that. Um, and again, it will run through the process of Windows 11 setup like you're probably used to. So it's going to start straight away, start installing it. If it doesn't, you can just go ahead and select the options to um, select your disk there. But obviously, because we've automated the process, you should see it should start automatically running through the process. So um, automatically, you saw then it's gone straight to installing Windows 11. So I'm just going to leave that to install. And again, I'll be back in just a few moments. So just to also mention as well, when you're installing, you may also get this window, which will show, which will be a PowerShell window. Now, depending on what you have actually enabled and disabled in Windows, it will actually run some commands in the background during the install. This is completely fine. Just leave it to install. It should, shouldn't take too long. But again, obviously, I'll, when, when we get to later on the video, I'll show you exactly what it is doing. So we'll just leave that to run. And again, I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, so now our PC is just rebooted. So um, it has actually just skipped the entire Windows setup menu. So now we're going to leave this to carry on. It's just going to say getting things ready for you, which is the usual desktop installation experience. Leave that to run there. And again, this will take a couple more minutes. So we're almost there. So just be back. I'll be back with you guys in just a second. Okay, so now our, our PC has actually now rebooted. I'm now going to show you obviously what's going to what's going to happen. So as you can see just then, it's just changed the desktop background. So it's going to be still be running a few sort of commands if it hasn't done so during the setup procedure. But as you can see now, if I just close this, sorry about the um, about the size of the window, by the way, it's just because obviously it hasn't installed the graphics drivers yet. So what I'll do is I'll just see if I can quickly change the display to be a little bit larger here. 
Uh, it's not all the drivers yeah it's okay so um but what it is so yeah so now everything is back onto the desktop now as you can see uh, it's going to be quite a clean installation and what i mean is if you actually go to the start menu and then go to all apps um as you can see there's not much bloatware in here at all because normally when you click on start you'd see like TikTok, instagram sort of these different you know random pre-installed applications but those are all gone Everything is, you know, it's all nice and clean. There's just nothing installed, pre-installed. So you should have a fairly quiet, well, quite a fast performance PC as well because you haven't got all the stuff pre-installing in the background. Um, and again, everything that you would have configured would also be uh, set based on what you set in that XML file. So hopefully that's it, guys. So this is also based on Windows 24 H2. So again, I've also got Windows Recall disabled here as well. I hope that's helped you guys out there. If it has, please smash that like button as it always really helps to get this video into the YouTube algorithm. Please also smash that subscribe button as well as I'm on the way to getting 2,000 subscribers now, which is just amazing. And um, also please leave your comments down in the section box down below. But as always guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then. Bye for now.